Uh, my name is Jackie. Uh, I work as account support at GitHub, uh, but I have a background in QA uh, and I work when I worked here in Dublin. I'm going to speak about diversity, uh, which many of us will be, uh, but specifically I want to talk about why we're failing at it and that we're failing at it because we don't particularly believe the things we're saying. It seems to be really hard. I mean, we're pretty creative and we do a lot of really cool things in tech and gaming industries. We talk a lot about innovation and we can't crack this, or we haven't yet. And all the big tech companies are releasing their diversity numbers and it never really looks good. I think if we really believed that having a more diverse workforce would make better products, that this would look an awful lot better. We should believe it. We're faced every day by stories that tell us about the reasons we're failing because we didn't have uh, diverse enough teams. We have things like Google's auto photo auto-tagging that had exactly the same uh, race-based failure as Flickr's when it was auto-tagging auto people as animals. And it did that a year after Flickr had theirs. There was no excuse at all, but if they had a more diverse team, they may have been more aware and done some more testing or at least delayed uh, launching until they weren't risking that. Uh, one example I've seen recently that made me really happy, uh, at Inspire Fest, Accenture's uh, Ellen Shook spoke about their diversity initiatives, specifically gender diversity, and they've made an actual business target, which is what we do in business when we want to achieve something. But it's not something we've often done with diversity. And one of the things she says is that diversity starts at the top, which is true, because you can't complain about a pipeline not being full if that pipeline doesn't actually go anywhere. And they've made some real progress. Their numbers weren't great to begin with, they're not perfect now, but they're well on their way to hitting their targets, which is what happens when you set it as an actual transparent business target. Clearly, this is not just an issue in tech and gaming. Our world is very diverse, but we are incredibly segregated. Marginalization is how we keep people away from privileged spaces. And I think the problem is worse in tech and gaming specifically because the jobs are often very good, which makes us a privileged space. I think because the problem is magnified here, I think the opportunity is as well. It sounds a bit corny, but if we can crack this, we can make a real impact on the world. And we keep trying to do that. We, we try to do that with taxi apps and new iPhones. But I think we should be trying to do that with people. So if it's society's problem, what's the problem? We're taught from the beginning that marginalized people don't have potential. We're taught that a person's opportunities are a direct reflection on their potential. So a lack of a prestigious degree from a prestigious university or the lack of an unpaid internship speaks to a person's ability rather than to what they can do when there may be very good reasons why they couldn't afford to go to a prestigious university or work for a year without taking any pay. We are taught that marginalized people are unreliable. You only have to look at the news to see that women and people of color aren't believed. When we talk about ourselves and our experiences, we're not allowed to be an authority on ourselves or on our experiences. And if we're not allowed to be an authority on ourselves and our experiences, how are we supposed to be an authority on anything else? We believe that marginalized people should try and fit with the dominant culture in order to succeed. We've tried this. It's pretty much feminism uh, for a long time. It marginal gains, but it hasn't really increased diversity. It has just increased the amount of people who can fit into the dominant culture. Real diversity happens when we invite people in 
because they are different, recognizing the value of that. That's what will create better products for everybody and not just better products for everybody who looks and thinks exactly the same. So if we want to believe, I think it starts with acting like we do. I think we have to start by consciously making ourselves believe marginalized people when they say they can do something. There's a real trend, and there's quite a lot of research, especially about women specifically, where if they look at a job ad and they only have 60% of the qualifications, they won't apply. They will if they're 100 or very close to it. Whereas if you look at uh, straight white men, they will typically apply if they think they have about half the qualifications. And throughout our careers, we're often told in subtle ways that we're not capable of doing things. I think when we say we can do something, we should be listened to because it actually took quite a lot to get there. and behind. So. This is part of the hard work. Uh, we talk a lot about people in our employment. We want them to step up, take initiative, be self-managing. There's a lot of buzzwords in this. But I think we have to look past that and understand that not everybody has learned in the same way how to succeed in a workplace and that for many people, they need to be actively encouraged to take advantage of educational opportunities or growth opportunities they may not feel entitled to. So stepping up may be an expression of entitlement, not specifically an expression of someone's ability, which means if we're looking to give somebody more responsibility, we need to consider everybody and make a really, like, just a list Somebody may not occur to you, and they may not occur to you because of the biases you're trying to push against. And even if we're marginalized ourselves, we all have these biases. So making sure we consider everybody so that we're not leaving somebody out on the basis of our own biases is really important, and this will help significantly. I think a big part of this is not having a fixed idea about how a person might do the thing that needs doing. I think, you know, obviously in our heads, we use a lot of shortcuts in our brains. We think an accountant looks a certain way, talks a certain way, and dresses a certain way. And we see a person who does that, we think, yeah, that person's totally going to be a great accountant. Uh, so we think the same. We can picture a developer, designer. We can picture a manager. We, we, we kind of know what, what all these people look like in our heads, and that influences who we pick to do these roles. Uh, in a previous career, uh, my manager hired a guy for a sales role. And I remember laughing to myself. I was like, this guy won't last a week. He was so quiet and shy. You could barely hear him when he spoke. And that wasn't very often. And sales is really macho. you know. He didn't have that typical sales personality that most of us had or were able to perform. But he was brilliant at it. He sold. He hit his targets. The numbers on the wall, he hit those numbers. Customers liked him. He made a real connection. He just did it differently than the rest of us did. He could still do it. So you have a thing you want done. You have a person who says they can do that. I think you take a deep breath and you watch them try. Yeah. This isn't easy. It's, it's easier to keep using the same processes, doing things the same way all the time. It would be easier, I guess, to keep using the same programming languages, the same design tools. We wouldn't be making great products if we did. It'd be easier. And I think this is the same. We have to work really hard at this. And if we do, we will make better products. Because we have to understand that the overhead we're putting in is worth it. I think we just need to believe because this could actually change everything. Thank you.